on the previous idea. So Vine was a short form video platform that was limited to a seven second video. If you haven't ever looked up Vine, like go on YouTube, look up Vine compilations. They're hilarious, they're awesome. That culture transcended into TikTok. So if you know Vine, you're gonna do better on TikTok. Every time a new platform comes out, it's relevant, at least explore it, because the communication you learn on one platform is transferable. People that were on Snapchat stories do better on Instagram stories, when Instagram you know, made the update and added stories in. So what makes TikTok different than Vine is um, Vine was really limiting with its time frame, literally six seconds and under, that was it. TikTok, you have a lot more leniency. You got three seconds to 59 seconds to make your visual masterpiece. And it's an incredibly forgiving platform. Like on Instagram, like how many of you feel uncomfortable or judged posting something? In general, a lot of people feel like it has to be like perfect, extremely polished, like well thought out, and to a point, yeah, but it's become almost insane. Like, if you post something, you're like, that has to be able to go on a magazine, or it's not good enough. TikTok is sort of revitalizing bootlegging videography, and anyone can do it, and it's accessible in your pocket. It's only available on your phone. So, you can do stuff that really old school filming would do, like old fashioned lighting tricks to make like a makeup look like it's moving, or jump, uh, jump cuts, that's really popular. So if like I jumped in the air, we would cut the footage and then I would change outfits and then jump in the same spot and land. But in the footage, it would look like I jump in the air and my clothes magically change and I fall. Stuff like that is huge on TikTok. So it's bringing back all the old school videography stuff, but you can do it in the, your backyard, you can do it in your dorm room, you can do it in your bed at night. Like, it's awesome, it's incredibly accessible. And because of this, you have developed a culture that essentially isn't obsessed with editing. Like people adding cool effects, or they're like a videographer, they might have all the special effects they add outside the application. But what makes TikTok so special is it has an in-application recording and editing software. So, if I just like whip out my phone right now, I can hit record with a certain effect that will make my voice sound like a robot. And I could split the screen like four different ways and add a lighting effect. And all this stuff, you can do it really quickly, simply, and you could produce it in a half an hour and post it out to the world. So that's cool, that's unique, that's why it's fun. And everybody is so accepting. You get, um, and like traditional film and everything you're going to expect on YouTube and on actual movie theaters, you're expecting like super high quality costumes. Like if that person is a guy who is like a badass, he's gonna be a male actor that's super ripped with like excellent makeup and a full costume, it was like $400 to put together. On TikTok, if you wanna be a mom, there's this weird subculture, you put a towel on your head and now you're a mom. So you have freedom to express yourself and your idea in any way, shape, or form that you see fit. So you're no longer limited by having a team, having special equipment, being able to afford costumes, or having skill to do makeup, or to have any of that stuff. You can literally put a towel on your head and employ a voice effect, be a woman, and then flip the camera, and now all of a sudden you're playing the sun, and then flip it back, and that's like, it's a huge comedy genre. It's a really creative application. So, in general, I just wanted to sort of tell you why I'm actually uh, credible in this source, like why, sh why should I be talking to you about TikTok? Um, first of all, I have almost 400,000 followers. I started a year ago, that's an insane growth on a platform that's very unusual, it's like an outlier. Um, and also, I've grossed over 58 million views in that short period of time. And that's only when I started taking it seriously. My first video I posted last February, like 5th or so, 
and I posted occasionally up until August, and then I did my research on the platform, because way back when, TikTok was actually two separate applications. One was called Musical.ly, and the other was ByteDance. I think they're both Chinese-owned companies. And they do really well. China has like a huge vertical video market, so does America. Um, but they don't have the same regulations we do, and they were data mining from children. So if you have any negative association with TikTok, publicly, that's where that came from. They were stealing information from minors with nobody's consent, and they got huge lashback for that, and they were sued, a lot of them. So the company split up, and a Canadian company bought the other half. They merged, and it became TikTok. So now it became a safe, following rules and regulations of privacy, video, vertical platform that is available everywhere, ironically except in China, <laughs> because China has incre incredibly restrictive laws for internet, like they don't have Google there, um, it's not openly accessible, so it's available everywhere, but TikTok's fame right now, where it's exploding, is in the US, and India, and kind of Canada. There's a replicator app that's like similar that we don't have access to that's exploding in China as sort of like what follows their laws and limitations, but that doesn't apply to any of you unless you plan on living in China. Okay, so in general, um, the culture on TikTok is really accepting and it has unlimited potential for what you want to talk about. If you have like a super passion about making pies, you can do that and it'll be incredibly marketable. At this moment, what tends to do the best on TikTok, like what already has established genres on TikTok, is dancing and lip syncing. That's the ones you've probably heard of and that's where you're like, oh, it's so childish, I wanna be on it. Then there's also um, instructional content. So how to make a pie, how to do makeup, how to curl your hair, blah, 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 how to change the oil on your car. The, the options are infinite. Uh, the why is that different than YouTube? Oh, yeah, I know nothing. So totally sorry. fine. <laughs> uh, YouTube is only vertical or horizontal. So uh, TikTok is only on your phone. YouTube is accessible on any device. YouTube is built for educational, long-form content. So people are typically looking up something that they want to know more about and watch a process. Like, I'm in the middle of repairing my sink, and I don't know how to do it. I'm going to type in how to repair this model of a sink, and then watch it, and then know how to do it. Whereas TikTok is more of quick, easy access to entertainment or to education. So in under a minute, I can know how to not get screwed over by my repairman by knowing what to look for when I'm getting my brakes changed. In a minute, under a minute, super easy. And on YouTube, you have like a search bar, that's the first thing, you got recommended videos of different categories. YouTube, you search it, there's gonna be a bunch of different things with a bunch of recommendations. TikTok is actually really simple. You open the app, it comes up to the For You page, which is what the algorithm recommends to you, and then you can choose For You or Following. So if you click following, you'll only see videos from people you're following. If you click for you, you'll see what the algorithm recommends you based on what you watch. And you only see one video at a time. You see a video, it takes the whole screen. You can like it or comment or share, and then swipe up and it's a brand new video. Instead of YouTube where it's like all of the stuff all in your face. Good question. Um, yeah, okay, so there's also a huge market for comedy. If you're funny, you're entertaining, or you're good at acting, go on TikTok, be your true self, express yourself there, tell your jokes, stand-up is huge. Uh, and then also dark humor is a major, major genre on there. Um, pretty much ran by Gen Z and Millennials. It's got a lot on there. Um, yeah, so at this moment, a lot of people are talking about TikTok in a negative light from its past, and also they're saying, well, I don't want to do that. My target audience is 30 plus, or it's 45 plus, or it's 60 plus, or whatever. And the people on TikTok are young. 
typically, yeah, people on TikTok are young. Usually how social media works is someone will make something cool or not so cool. It'll get put out in the world, and the people who are the early adopters are usually the people who are younger, have more time, are on summer break or whatever. They download it, they fiddle with it, and based on how good it is, is if it'll actually succeed or not. TikTok actually succeeded. So the primary audience that's on TikTok is ranging from 13, probably as low as eight. They just changed their policy so you have to be 16 years of age to use it, but I'm not sure how like regulated that is. But like 13 to 21-ish, that's who is mainly on there. It's probably like 70% of the audience. Then it's probably 30 to 45 makes up a next biggest chunk, and then a tiny percent is outliers of 60 to 80, or even, I've seen people that are like 100 on there, like talking about their dogs and stuff, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, like, it's accessible to everyone, and everyone just feels really accepted there. It has a huge LGBTQ community, it's incredibly accepting in every genre, there's people, everyone's just like super nice. <laughs> there's always going to be bullies on every platform, but in general, TikTok, is talking about the stuff they're not talking about in schools. How to do your taxes, how to do voice training as a trans man, or um, where to get your wigs from if you have alopecia, or like teaching about obscure diseases that most people aren't familiar with, or how you do your general day-to-day -day as a person that's like a double leg -like amputee. Like, it's really cool. Two, probably. Bring up the application itself. Hold on. I've been talking so much, I'm so thirsty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so TikTok currently exists on the internet, on computers, on tablets, on PCs and stuff, but you can only look at it. You can't interact with it, you can't post. So like this is TikTok.com slash witty artistry, my page. And you can see all the videos laid out. It'll look pretty similar on the phone, but the phone is the only thing that you can record on, post on, share videos, download videos, and do all the fun extra stuff. Oh. How do you access the um, thumb drive? Oh boy. I'm not a Mac user. <laughs> I will show you. Where do I find it? <laughs> it is over here, right there. Oh, it's already edited, yeah. but like, where do you access it? Oh, here. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, application. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about as big as it's going to go. Everyone see that, or how do I make it full screen? Mm -hmm. the, 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 this one? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's what I want. All right, so this is what your home screen looks like when you access TikTok. A video will immediately start playing. I thought that was really annoying when I got it first. You gotta get used to it. But this will pop up. You have all these... Up. No, I wasn't supposed to do that. I'm supposed to stay over here. <laughs> you have all these options on the bottom, the side, and two different things at the top. So at the top, on the top left, it says following. And on the top right, it says for you. Whatever one is bolded is which option you're on. So right now, this is the for you page. So the algorithm said that I like Disney makeup, so it brought up a Snow White Disney makeup and took a screenshot of it. If I wanted to like this video because I enjoyed it, I'd either double tap on the screen, just like Instagram, or I'd hit the little heart button. So over here, these items. This is someone's profile. If you click their face, it'll take you to the profile. They made the video. If I hit the plus button, it'll follow them. If I hit the heart, it'll like the video. If I do this, it'll show all the comments, and I can comment. If I hit the arrow, I can share it with a friend, like send it through text messages, or the messenger on Facebook, or via email, or whatever other thing you like to share with. Then, on the information on the individual video itself, you always have this at sign. That shows who made the video, 
so it's this person, uh, caption and hashtags, which are one solid thing. Your hashtags and your caption are in the same line, just like Snapchat and just like Vine. Then you have the information about the song, and then the record. This will spin, and if you click on it, it'll show you the song. If the song is in their database, it'll tell you the name and who wrote it. If it's not, it'll tell you which content creator either made the sound or uploaded it to TikTok. What's also cool about TikTok is they have a online database of music that you can use, and it's a pretty substantial database. They have a lot of basic licensing and um, fair use for under 15 second content, <laughs> content clips. So you can go in the search bar and type in whatever song suits your fancy. If it's in the public domain, they'll have the whole song. If it's not, it'll probably be a 15 second clip unless if they have a specific license with TikTok. TikTok actually controls the music industry right now. People that go viral on TikTok their views and, well, oh, it's not views because you're listening to it, but <laughs> the plays on like Spotify or Pandora, or whatever they're on, spike. They could go from like 300 views a month to 7 million the next month because someone's song went viral on TikTok. If you're a musician, you better be on TikTok like now. <laughs> um, and then you also have the ability to upload your own audio um, through uh, separate digital software, so if you like make your own video, you can upload it to TikTok, or you could use TikTok to record, and then it'll have the sound already like pre-programmed pre -programmed in. So that's all that information. And then you have this information. This is how you navigate the application. It's all at the bottom, super simple. The far left is the home button. We are on the home screen. So that's following or for you. So for you is recommended by the algorithm. In the beginning, when you download the app, TikTok will drive you crazy because you'll be getting all sorts of crap you don't like. <laughs> if you want stuff that you like, only tap the like button or comment or watch the full video on things you actually enjoy. And then TikTok will become this amazingly wonderful creative time sink where it just keeps showing you all the stuff you like and you have to like manage how long you watch it. Now you hit following. If you switch to following, you'll only be shown videos by the people that you follow. So when you download it and hit on following, there'll be nothing there because you're not following the users. So that's the home button. Then you have the discover button, which is essentially your search bar. Back to I didn't take a screenshot of that. Anyway, uh, it's a search bar that is just this big white page, the search bar at the top. And you can search by sound, you can search by creator, or you can search by hashtag. Just like you can on Instagram, but with the addition of sound. So if like, I really like Thomas Sanders from Instagram and Vine, you can find him on there by typing at Thomas Sanders, he'll come up. If you're really into cat videos, you type hashtag cats and stuff that's related to cats that someone used, the hashtag cats will come up and show you all the wonderful cat videos. But what's unique about TikTok is audio is so important. You can have an entirely subculture based on an audio. So if I took a chunk out of a song, and everybody's heard the song. And within that song, it has a specific meaning. But if I take it out and then put actors in it with different captions, it all of a sudden has a different meaning and it could become ironic or funny or entertaining or dark or whatever direction you wish to take. But then someone goes, oh, I got a good idea for that audio. So then they make the audio and then turn it into something completely different. And that's how audio goes viral and then as a viewer, you start to expect something. So if there's like, um, I don't know, like a Toys R Us jingle or something, and everybody's doing hacky sacking to it, that's a totally made up idea, but hacky sacking to it, eventually you get sick of Toys R Us combined with hacky sacking. So then the first person you see that does it with a different spin, with an unexpected twist, it'll catch you off guard. 
and that's how things spread. TikTok is basically original ideas and then knocking off ideas in a creative new way. So that's the discover. Yeah. Would you say there uh, there's like a formula to making um, like instant viral audio? Um, I wouldn't say there's a formula because everything is controlled by the end user. So if you think something's great, but 90% of the population on the app at that time that you post something doesn't think it's great, it won't do well. That doesn't mean it's bad, it just doesn't mean that it works well in this platform. However, there are certain things that do perform really well on TikTok. Lots of videos that have like a gentle beginning with some sort of drop, like um, with like bass or some total shift in genre halfway through, those do really well because people like to show the beginning of a process and then the drop comes and then it's like boom, the process is done, look at how cool my new bathroom looks or how great this makeup is or whatever. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, the audio not being stupid loud, nobody likes the sound breakers that were on Vine, like the Thomas the Train Engine that would blare out your, yeah, you all know, <laughs> when that video would come up, you would die. You'd be like, oh no, why the phone cover it with a pillow? Thomas the Train Engine would come in at random times and meme to the sound and go, brr, 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 and like it would blow out the speakers, it was terrible. People don't like that. <laughs> so they're trying to get rid of that, don't do that in your truck tick tock audio, and make sure your audio is clear. So if you're speaking, people want clarity. There's nothing easier to kill a good video than people not being able to understand you. If you're using sign language or um, speaking a different language and trying to target another audience, always use captions. You can write in the app. You can just hit the text tool and then whoop, write a caption and leave it in the video however long you want. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Any other questions before I? Awesome. All right, so the... I'm gonna skip over this for now because it's the most complicated one. Then there's the inbox. This is your notification system. It looks like a little text message thing. It'll tell you how many notifications you have by number up until 99, and it'll just say 99 plus. TikTok is so freaking cool for this specific reason. You can sort your notifications. Oh, I know. So on everything else, it'll be like, here's a follower, here's a comment, here's a tag, someone mentioned you, blah, 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 blah. It's a gobbledygook train wreck, and then it disappears after a certain amount of time and you miss people tagging you in photos, mentioning you, really substantial people that follow you that you'd like to shout out or something. It's just bad. We're on TikTok, you can sort it. At the top there'll be a little arrow, you just hit it, and it'll be like, how would you like to sort? By comment, by follower, by like, by share, by mention, or whatever, and then you can just look at that. So I do that for comments all the time. I get thousands of comments a day, I can just go in have it all by comments, and they just released a new update that you can reply to the comment. It'll create a little tiny thing that says reply. You type it, hit enter, and then you can move down without it resetting you back to the top like Instagram does and all these other apps do. So that's cool. Um, so that's the, the inbox. And then there's the me page. So this was like the profile I was showing you. If you hit me, it'll go to your profile. It'll show your um, your public image, your thumbnail. The buttons are on the wrong side. All right, so it'll look a little different on the phone, but typically, uh, I can't there. Typically on the phone, you'll have the thumbnail at the top. And then you'll have your username, which mine's Witty Artistry, the at symbol, and then it'll say following, it'll say followers, and then how many likes you've accrued total on your entire page. So, and then underneath you have a very, very, very small part for a bio. You can only use 80 characters. A lot of people do ironic stuff there, like, yeah, I'm not that interesting, or like, whatever. Um, I always recommend putting your name, if your name isn't obvious in your username, which my first name is not. Um, and then I chose to include my email. Always write your email in. You do not have the benefit of a clickable link on an email like you do on a business page on Instagram. You can, but you have to have like 
two million followers and higher and also be verified and TikTok has to like you and then you can have a clickable, clickable email but for the meantime just like put it in there. Uh, and then next to your name, it's not on the computer version, but on your phone there'll be a little box that has a little play button in it that looks like YouTube. If you click on it, you can link your TikTok to other apps. You can only do it with YouTube and Instagram. So if you have a YouTube, you have an Instagram, make sure your branding matches each other and link it on your TikTok. Always, 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 when you're doing social media and you're trying to establish a personal brand or a business brand, always use the same username. If you have plans to be on a platform in the future, go on a platform and just secure your username. You don't have to ever use it again, but three months from now, if your shoe idea company name or your, your actual name was taken, you don't want to have unmatching branding. So if I'm witty artistry on TikTok, I'm witty artistry on Facebook, Instagram, Firework, everything. Because there's not perfect crossover between them. People will Google you and then find you and then follow you. If they can't easily find you, you miss out on the crossover of the followers. And it's it's no good if you do that. Um, so always think of profile looks like on your application. General information. Bio. This button allows you to edit your profile by putting a thumbnail, changing your username, or changing your bio. This button allows you to add Instagram and YouTube as a clickable link. And this button is something extra fun that TikTok allows you to do, and I think Instagram does too. You can save videos or sounds or hashtags that interest you. So if you keep seeing an audio that's trending on TikTok, you can save that audio. So then when you want to film using that audio, you just come to your homepage and you click this button and it'll bring down a drop down menu about, you pick songs, you pick videos, you pick whatever, and you can see or use any of those videos you please. So something that is really unique about TikTok as well is your ability to interact with other creators. So like on Instagram, what can you do other than comment? You could share them in your story, but it's not very interactive, especially when it's a video. However, on TikTok, you have the option to duet with people, to react with people, and to share people on your page. I wouldn't recommend doing that without their, their permission, but duetting is a really cool, unique feature um, that when someone's video comes up, it's really hard to show an app that doesn't exist on a computer. So when you see someone's video, you have the option here to share it to another space. But it'll also bring up a load of other options, like saving the video to your phone, um, sharing it on like Google Drive. But the coolest ones are to duet and to react. So what a duet will do is you will be jump-started into the filming part of the application. And this video, the Snow White thing, will be shoved to the left side of the screen and formatted appropriately, and now you're filming the right side of the screen. So you can collaborate together without even being in the same place, without talking to them, and it's totally fine to do it, and people will create unique interactions with each other. So like, if this person turned into Snow White and it was really, really cool, I could duet her, it would keep the same audio, her video would be playing, the video would be the same length as hers, but then, I could turn into a dwarf on the other side and then be like waving it, and that would be really cool. Um, you have infinite artistic capability with this, 
and it's a really good way to stay connected with your community and like promote other creators. I'll make videos specifically to be duetted. Like I duetted with um, someone who did Harley Quinn when I did The Joker. People do an audio that has multiple voices in it and only act to one specific audio, hoping that someone will be the Joker or Batman and then combine it and make the actual clip complete. So I'll show you the Joker example. Yeah. Is this make it full screen? There? The no, green button top left. Oh, yep, yeah, no. Right. Okay. I'm just getting the duet, so that's like my first one. So that's one thing. It also offers the ability to react. Some people might think that's dumb, but it can be really, really valuable um, in a variety of different settings. So if you hit this arrow and you slide over to react, this video will now be shrunk into a tiny little box that you can choose where it's going to be on the screen and then record you, or whatever you want to record, reacting to the video. So like, uh, a really applicable time would be, I made a painting of a character, because that's what I do, and someone out there followed my tutorial and recreated it and tagged me. So I could find their video and then react, like saying good job, like that was awesome, and you can like put captions on it, and that's a really good way to give back to your audience. Um, Another, yeah. So, if I understand you correctly, so you can put content out there, but someone else can you utilize that content without asking you to utilize it? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's considered like a public reaction. So, if like a politician said something that you really didn't disagree with, or that you really disagreed with, you could react to that video if they have a TikTok, which I doubt. But if they have a TikTok, you could react to it and then present your viewpoint to your audience. That's a, that's a way you can do it. But yeah, there's no copyright infringement. You're not treading over any trademark boundaries. Like that's built into the app. It's what's for. Yeah. What do you what do you do when your content is duetted with um, material that might be offensive or something you don't want to be affiliated with? Yeah. So um, TikTok has its own rules and guidelines. Basically, no sex, no illegal drugs, no nudity no exploiting children for profit. Um, and then they have this really weird thing with weapons. That's the one that they haven't quite figured out yet. A robot is who's in control of all of this, so the regulations can get a little fuzzy. Um, so like if, if I posted a video with a real gun, it would get taken down. If I posted a video with the neon green squirt gun, it could still get taken down, even though it's not a weapon, because a robot is controlling it. So if someone used your content in something that violates TikTok guidelines, you can do this anywhere. Um, in this little arrow, when someone's video is up, you can slide over to report. So if it's about one of those bad topics, you could report it. Now you could report it for harassment, bullying, nudity, gore or whatever and then there's one that says like I'm in this video and I don't like it kind of like Facebook and then you just do that and you hope it gets taken down um, most people don't see it uh, I get so many reactions and duets and I can't keep up with them and they might have like two likes on them so chances are it'll be fine and if it's something that violates the guidelines you can easily get it taken down by just reporting it yeah. okay. Yeah, hate speech too. You can't uh, directly attack someone or bully. You can say your opinion as long as it's not directly targeting someone. So if you're talking like, I don't like white people, like that's not okay. But if you're talking about a specific incident and your feelings about it, that's fine. You can't call out people in the comments. You can't bully someone, cyberbullying. Like they're really, really trying to crack down on that. You can only do so much. So you gotta rein it in. They're working on it, but. Yeah, for the most part, that's that.
anyone else have any more questions? Yeah. Is there a limit to how many like duet duets? Like, I've seen duets where there's like four. Or yeah. Three. Oh, yeah. That's how the thing. far can people you go? infinitely do it forever? Oh, yeah. It'll just go forever. So every time you do it, it will shrink the video and make it into a square format and put yours to the left. Someone can duet that duet and then it'll shrink it and then move yours over. People will do like chain cosplays that are like funny. Like someone turned into the Tinky Winky Teletubby and then someone did the next one and then the next one and the next one and then you thought it was done at four and then someone became the sun and then someone became the vacuum. Like <laughs> it just keeps going. Um, on your settings, you have the option to limit duets and to limit reactions and to not allow comments or limit comments. Do not do those. Make sure you're able to comment, able to do it, able to do whatever. Yeah? Uh, could you, like, for instance, duet yourself? Yeah, you can. I've done that too. <laughs> yeah, you just duet yourself. You just click on your video, scroll over, do the same thing. You just, um, do that. Yeah. It seems like that could be a funny, like, a comedy form to it as far as, like, a react. Like, you could be a character doing a comment and then be another character reacting to yeah, yeah, you could cosplay multiple characters and talk to each other, or if you don't have a team of people to work with, you could just be the other person. <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, so a really important thing though, when you're going to be on TikTok and any social media, is to establish your brand. So if you already have existing social media and you want to keep it, use the same username. Use the same thumbnail. Thumbnail is more important than the username. People recommend, like, recognize images and remember images way more than they're going to remember your username. So if you have like a really good thumbnail, use it on everything. Keep it consistent. When you're making a thumbnail, try to have your face in it. I know it's scary sometimes if you want to be a person that's just behind the camera, but people connect with faces better than they do with random things around the world. So when you're establishing your brand on TikTok though, it's important to decide early on, are you a family friendly brand or are you not? TikTok allows swearing and just general vulgar things. If they skate the line, you know, the line of the rules, you can get away with a lot by putting in captions instead of saying something bad or doing something bad. So there's a lot of implied profanity or implied vulgarity in certain subgenre spaces. So it's really important to figure out if you want to be family friendly. I'm family friendly for the most part. I don't go anywhere near the vulgarity or the sexual end of anything or exploitation of anything. But I might swear with an audio on a very rare occasion. But in general, I choose not to cuss because I don't want to limit my market or who I can work with. People on TikTok might go viral for really trashy audio where they're saying, seven different racist terms and all this other stuff but like do you want to be that person do you want to be represented in that way like there's this awful audio that it's just you can barely understand the person they're just listing off all this stuff on an angry phone call and like basically if you use it right now and the makeup could yeah you know what i'm talking about <laughs> if you use it in the makeup community it's like boom seven million views overnight oh but do you want those followers because i sure don't <laughs> Question uh, on the algorithm. So going back to the for you and the following. Yeah. You know, like on Instagram, you could not see things for hours upon end because of the way the algorithm works. So how does it work with TikTok? So TikTok um, is brand new. It's easily accessible. The algorithm is amazing because it hasn't been monetized. Right now we are in the gold mine rush. You know, pushing west, like, you better get in there in that frontier and do it. Like, I'm talking about, you could start one thing tonight, post one video, and wake up with three million views the next day. It happens a lot. It's not an outline thing. It happens a lot. And the more people and the more time that passes, the more complicated the algorithm will get. The more limiting things will become, especially when there's monetization. Right now, Instagram isn't as old as Facebook. Facebook is very old, 16 years old. Facebook requires a lot of money to do an ad. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> You're okay. Uh, Facebook requires a lot of money to make an effective ad that actually gets shown to people. Um, 
Impressions is how many times eyeballs saw your thing. Reach is how many accounts does it have the potential to be shown to. Uh, so those are like the analytics on Instagram. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, there's how, a good chance if someone posts, you know, once a day that you're going to see it on TikTok versus like on Instagram where you yes, may not see it yes, all the day. Until yes, for sure. Right now, it's like you can get famous off of TikTok in a month. That makes you an outlier because it's not super common, but you can have success if you are interesting or talented or entertaining or pretty or whatever just by trying. It's awesome. Yeah? Uh, how important or how overblown is hashtagging in TikTok? Because I like know a lot of, especially the like, uh, kind of music artists that are trying to get out there, like half just lines and lines of hashtags are what they put on every yeah. single post, hoping that that hashtag will help the algorithm help them get forward. And then it gets to a point where it's just like, you know, why are you hashtagging dogs on Instagram if there's no dog in your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Instagram in some, or like a ha hashtags in summary on stuff outside of TikTok. I'll just summarize because this is about TikTok. But a hashtag is a search word. So if you post a poodle, you want to use hashtag poodle. But poodle is a really common word that everybody knows. So it's going to have like 4 billion uses. How are you supposed to get noticed in 4 billion posts? But French poodle might have 500,000 uses. You want to add in French poodle. But then like, who has poodles? It might be a dog owner or dogs of Instagram or pet groomer and then you get a little more obscure. You want to cover a large area, getting super saturated hashtags, really undersaturated hashtags, and the majority are in the sweet spot in the middle, like 500,000 uses to like 200,000 uses. That's like the best, best hashtag range. Uh, Instagram, you can have 30 hashtags. Uh, max, use them all because you're making 30 ways that people can find your content. If you only post two, you only have two ways people can find your content. You're just limiting yourself. So on TikTok, it's a totally different story. Um, you get shown stuff because of what you like. So if I like a video that has a female person in it with a really high beat audio, if I like that, even if it's about like sewing, I'll probably get recommended more videos that have females in it with high beat audio and also things related to sewing. So when you're using hashtags on TikTok, you want to be limiting and just pick the big buzzwords of your topic. You only have a hundred characters in your caption. So you, like I'm fine, you can use your caption ironically or you can use it specifically or thank your people for watching. Um, like. Uh, you can reference like bringing back that old vine and then you recreated a vine and like there's a bee and like it'll be in there together combined people get the reference you could say like this took me 12 hours to make don't let it flop that caption doesn't tell you anything about the video about except how long it took um when you're using hashtags on tiktok always 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 use hashtag for you page f-o-r why owe you the word page every single time. You have the option, a higher ability to get ranked on the For You page, which is what people open up to. If you get on the For You page and your stuff is really good, it'll keep exponentially growing and build and build and build and build. So you want to be on the For You page. That's your, that's your business goal. Your personal goal is to, you know, be authentic to yourself, post things that you actually love and care about. If you don't, you'll get burnout. People can tell you're not being authentic. They won't like you. And to post consistently. That's your question? Cool. When you say post consistently, what are we talking here? Yeah, so I'm actually about to get into that on how to thrive. So I will answer that extensively soon. Is your question about yeah, what was you talking about? Trends. 
friends. Yeah. Like what? Um, I feel like there's like a, a certain aesthetic that um, is associated with TikTok, uh, and I don't know if that's just like a very specific subgenre or um, like how how can you be authentic when um, TikTok is very visual based and they have uh, like ongoing trends. Yeah, so if you see a trend that's relevant to you and you can do, do a creative version of it, jump on it, post it immediately, do it. If it's completely unrelevant and you can't think of something within your niche, within your personality that fits it, don't do it. You're just hopping on the bandwagon, it won't reflect well on you, and it probably won't do very well because it's not relevant. So I don't do TikTok dances. I don't know how to do them. So there's zillions of TikTok dance trends. I don't do any of them unless if they involve just your arms, because I'm only painted from, from here up. So I'll like use my hands or whatever, but I don't typically do those. But then there's like seven different makeup trends, and I might be able to do four of them because four of them are appropriate. So you just have to be selective and actively be on the application to understand what's trending in your genre. And don't exploit yourself for views. Make sense? Good? So, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so you can't monetize TikTok, correct? There are ways to make money on TikTok, but it's not monetized in the ways that other apps are. Okay. As a creator, you cannot get paid per view, you don't get paid per comment, you don't get paid per share, nothing's at zero, that might change in the future. However, you can get paid through tips on live streaming. Live streaming on TikTok is accessible if you have a thousand followers or more. And then when you go live, just like Twitch, people have the ability to give you digital currency that has real monetary value. So on TikTok, they send you these weird um, animated critters that like do something like surf or high five you or whatever and they appear on the screen with the person's name this person gave you this um, and that has monetary value and it goes into your little TikTok bank that you can later cash out on to pay them. That's the only way specifically to make money on TikTok at this very moment which is why the algorithm is so good. They currently have advertising on TikTok but it's in a very limited way um, when you open the app, chances are there's going to be a brand takeover ad, which means someone paid to be on the front page before you enter, relevant to you. So like, Sabra Hummus was one that was on there recently, and I like hummus. So it came up and it's like, ooh, hummus. And then you just, you know, hit skip the ad, or you have the ability to click on it and buy something, but it's only one ad right when you enter. And then probably maybe every 15 to 20 videos, there might be one video that's an ad. And it's really easy to tell if it's an ad if it's a bad ad. You won't notice it's an ad if it's a good TikTok ad. Because they're hiring so many creators because they recognize the value. TikTok is getting millions and billions of views on videos from people in their backyard. So if they got someone that's a famous face that they can pay five grand to to show up to, like literally the, the ad I'm talking about, the Sabra Hummus. How many of you know the kombucha girl? Oh. Yeah, so she she literally, she just bought some kombucha, she opened it, she was filming herself, and she goes, mm. and, <laughs> and she's like, no, mm? what? That mm. smells like a public restroom. It smells like a public restroom. And that was it, and it went viral because it was funny and relatable. Like, I, I think it smells terrible too, and it tastes even worse. Some people like it, but it went viral. So viral, we're talking, this girl was contacted by TikTok and Sabra Hummus to make this six second ad, it's the recognizable face of this girl, with Sabra going, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's an effective TikTok, TikTok ad. So you'll get those occasionally when you scroll through. Outside of that, there's no advertising. There's no pop-ups, there's no, you can't skip the ad and all this other crap. And most of the ads have been customized to the audience, so they're actually entertaining. Some of them are really bad, but then like the community bands together and like trash talks the ad, and it'll get removed, or they'll recreate an ad that actually fits the platform. And everybody's like, yeah, good job, Sonic. Like Sonic the Hedgehog was so bad. <laughs> and then TikTok is like, what have you done? You ruined my boy, and like all this stuff. And the animators actually listen. 
They got them to reanimate an entire movie because they butchered the Sonic design so bad. And then now we have the new one that is out soon or it's out now. Valentine's Day. Okay, yeah. So have you ever personally made any money off of TikTok? Yes. Um, so with social media, you're not thinking about the end goal. You're not thinking about, if I do this many videos, I get paid this amount. You are getting free advertising. You're where the eyeballs are at. You're where the, um, the focus is for free. And right now, the one that you don't have to pay for, that you don't have to buy ads for, that you can have infinite success on, is TikTok. So, I do special effects makeup. I started YouTube late in the game, and in the grand scheme of things, started Instagram late, started like three and a half years ago, so it's better then than it is now. But because I'm on TikTok, I get all these other deals from competing app, like competitor apps that want me on their platform instead. So they'll pay me to make content there, or live streaming applications because they see that I'm entertaining and competent at video, so then they'll pay me to do that or there's companies going, TikTok is a valuable place to advertise. I want people in the beauty industry to use my product. I'll pay them to do that. So it's like, you put it out, and then the jobs come in if you do it right, and you're consistent, and you do it over a long term. I've only been on there a year. I've had really good success in a year. But the jobs related to TikTok only started coming in like the last four months. So you gotta stick with it. It's incredibly valuable to do that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Uh, if you work on a few different brands' ideas, is there a way to have different TikTok accounts? Yeah. Um, you can have as many accounts as you want on a device, but I have heard about issues with shadow banning if you have multiple accounts on a device, I would recommend sticking with one first until they get their coding a little bit better. For all of you who don't know what shadow banning is, um, it is essentially, like if you break violations on an app, you get banned. Or silenced for a certain amount of time until they decide that you should be given another shot. Could be a year, could be five days. Shadow banning is when the robot algorithm decides to ban you without officially banning you. So I could be posting content and nobody's seeing it. You can't find me, you can't search for me. People who are following me can, but nobody else can. So it like limits your growth. So if you want to know more things on TikTok shadow ban, I would recommend typing into Google like what gets you banned. Copyright violation is a huge one. Um, lots of strikes for the, the rules is bad. Um, and then coming off like too spammy. So if you're posting a thousand videos a day, you're gonna get banned. Yeah. Uh, with your thing about having multiple or too many accounts on one device, and yeah. shadow banning, does that also apply with having too many devices on one account? Like having your accounts shared across like a bunch of phones? Um, I try to limit it to like two. Uh, I haven't seen that in my research, but chances are it's probable. Hopefully that gets fixed. Is there a way to change like your username? For example, like I have a personal account. But, um, because you get shadow banned, um, with, like, more than one account, uh, I'd like to, like, change my name to something that I can market. Yeah, I think if you just hit edit profile, you can change the username. If you can't, then no, you can't, and you have to recreate a new account. Uh, I just signed up for it today in preparation for this thing. <laughs> All right. Um, and I, they allow you to change your account and username every 30 days. Oh, well, there's your answer. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to show you some examples real quick and then give you sort of like a summary on how to do well on TikTok. How much time we got? 15 minutes? Four minutes? Oh, shoot. Well, uh, I'm just going to show you some examples. Okay. Um, so here's one I made that went viral. I'm your girl so fine, but her breath is like She says she wanna dance, but she don't know how to I'm iced out, ooh, looking like a star Her name is Jenny, ooh, bitch don't have no panties I'm Steph Curry, when I hit the three, I hit the So, really random, 
and different for me, I usually don't do audio that involves cussing, but this is like a really popular audio and I really wanted to do a unique transition based video to show the makeup progression. Um, Transitions are huge on TikTok. You can like get transitions. Really simple. A lot of planning, a lot of transitions. Um, and then I do some longer form ones where I have a sort of transform into my true self. This is like no editing. It's just in my basement. It's really easy. Here. Go! Here! Yes, come to life. Area 51 and 1. Live! Live! Just colors. Alright, draw all over yourself with this pencil. Pure motivational music on. Like being with one hand is hard. Oh, and don't forget to get your hair out of the way. Little love love. Come make sweet the drawing. Just drew in all of the drips. Before we draw on face, we get rid of eyebrows. I don't want to see any of the hair. Easy, Chris. The eyebrow. So that's part one of three. As you can see, very different styles that appeal to very different audiences. So, I'll spare you with the other two because I know you want to know how to be successful and ready to go. Um, so, you want to post consistently as much as you can without burning yourself out. If you can post 10 videos a day, post 10 videos a day. If you can only manage one a week, post one a week. Post whatever amount you can sustain and be consistent on. You want to get yourself in a niche that you are super pumped about and that you are going to want to make content. Have a person in your videos at all times. You can do stuff with just speaking. That'll do well too, but make sure that at least a human is talking or a human is shown. Those always do better than I'm painting a thing and it's just music. Those can do well too, it's just statistically not as well to perform. Hey, you're um, you want to establish a posting schedule. If you're living your life in your state, what time do you go on your phone? Lunch break? Winter break? After dinner when you get home from work? I always post at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time because people got home from work and they had enough time to eat typically, but then it also appeals to the east and west coast because it's right before they go home from work, so it's like a lull. And then after dinner and when they're like home chilling. And then also, because TikTok is super powerful in India, it's the beginning of their morning. So then when the whole day is US, then it'll transition to when I go to sleep doing super well in, tic or in India. So it goes back and forth like that. Don't switch your subject matter consistently unless if you're marketing yourself. So in my case, yes, myself is part of the branding, but what I do is special effects makeup. I could do tutorials, I could do transitional videos, I could do dance videos in the makeup, I could do videos answering Q and A's about special effects makeup. But if I start consistently posting cooking videos, I just destroyed the branding I built. I just destroyed the following I built. You can do it occasionally. People are really forgiving and they're usually following you for you. So like, like recently my toilet decided to turn into a volcano of soap foam. I don't know how it happened, but I posted on there and everyone's like, oh my God, what happened? And it was fine. And it didn't like cripple my page or anything, but you want to keep stuff like that to a minimum. Uh, you have to love what you do, seriously. Like whatever it is right now that you think of, that you love, it's what you daydream about, like maybe it's baking, maybe it's singing songs or writing poems. Do that. Post as much things related to that, focused on that as you possibly can. And super important is engage with your audience. If someone bothered to watch your stuff and comment on it, you better reply. 
I reply to every single comment I get until I physically cannot anymore. I get thousands and thousands and thousands of comments on videos that go viral. I spend an hour every morning replying to comments. And then I stop. I can't do 4,000 comments when tomorrow there'll be 4,000 more. I have to make